Timothy Roberts, uh, Associate Professor of Saxophone at Shenandoah Conservatory in Winchester, Virginia. And we're going to talk this morning for just a little bit about double tonguing, what everybody wants to know more about, I think. A lot of, uh, a lot of students that I have um, want, to, want to learn how to double tongue, and they think that it's, they, they think that it's neat and cool, and that, it's, that you can substitute a single tongue with a double tongue. But the first, thing I want to, first point I want to make is that the double tongue is not a substitute for the single tongue. And you want to do, you definitely want to uh, build your single tongue up to to a, a speed of, say, 144 sixteenth notes at 144 before you start your, your learning how to double tongue. But the double tongue uh, is is something that you can um, that does help you um, get through certain passages of music that you might not be able to single tongue at at 144. So the, the opening section that we play this was uh, Paul Bonoska Priest on Form de Vals, which many of you know, and as if you noticed on the on the opening recording. I've taken the last page and changed some of the of, of the of the articulations on the last page, uh, to, from slurs to double tongues, just to make a point and to, to, to show you how effective the double tongue can be if you if you uh, use it properly. So we're going to start out talking a little bit about how do you double tongue, and the best way to describe a, a double tongue is that it's it's a ta ka ta ka syllable. So what you want to first do in, in learning how to double tongue is be able to tongue the saxophone with the ka syllable. So let's take, an, uh, say, a, 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 a top space G, and we're going to just make the ka, ka, ka sound with the G. If you can, once we do that, put on your metronome, say at 120, and, and practice doing eighth notes and sixteenth notes on that ka syllable. And then slow your metronome back down and practice alternating the ta's and the ka's. So you have... And that can get kind of awkward sounding uh, because usually for a student's first starting out doing that, they, you get, end up getting a sound like like you're riding on the back of a horse. It's always an uneven syllable. So what you want to do is uh, get the metronome on. Always do this with the metronome and uh, build up the consistency and the evenness of the of the tuz versus the cuz syllables. So you have. Try to build the tempo up to about 176, 180 on, again, the G or whatever notes you choose to use. And then add it to a scale. Can you play a G major scale and articulate the tuz and the cuz on every other note? Once you're able to apply that to the scale, then go back and, 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 and uh, apply it to a piece of music that you're working on. In this case, we're going to use the, the Bono Caprice. And many of you know this piece, but uh, for example, um, I'll start here at, at the beginning, and I'm going to change the eighth note. So this is on the fourth page of the, of the piece, on the third line, the presto. We're going to take the, the eighth notes and change them into sixteenth notes that are double-tongued. And, and actually, the articulation is doubled versus what is written. So it leaves you with... Which makes the performance much more effective, I think. There's another area where you can do this. On the same page, one, two, three, four, five, six, seventh line, you starting with the F double sharp, and you can you can uh, uh, double tongue take, take the slurs out and and change the slurs to a double tongue leaves you with again makes the performance more effective. And then fourth line from the bottom, how about taking the slurs out of the accelerando line and making. One important thing to note is that it's very hard uh, to double tongue on the saxophone very low and very high 
uh, with, with, within the range of the horn. For me, I do my best to try not to double tongue below a low E, this low E, or um, also I try not to, to be in a situation where I have to double tongue above a high B, maybe a high C. So if you notice that last lick that I just did, uh, when it, when the, on, the, on the fourth bar, when it gets to the high B, I switch back over to the slurs. So it leaves us with... So, just some tips to help you with your double tongue. One other point uh, that, that would be good to make also is, is it will always help your double tongue, even if there's not a crescendo written in the line, to push the airstream through the double tongue. It's very hard to double tongue on, with, a, with, a, um, uh, with a diminutive airstream. The, the pushing the air and adding crescendos when their double tongue is involved always helps make the double tongue uh, sound cleaner. So, hope this helps and have fun double tonguing.